Hello again, Mr. LaBeouf. This is for the 8th grade Algebra 1 students. You should watch this video uh, only after you've watched the video about x squared minus 10x minus 11. Uh, this time, our quadratic function, the polynomial that is our quadratic function, is not factorable. Of course, we know that the uh, y-intercept is negative 11. In order to find the x-intercepts, and uh, there are two here, we set the function equal to 0 and solve for x. Since we can't factor, we're left with the two other uh, methods, either completing the square or the quadratic formula, which are in fact the same. We'll do both. And then we're going to do what we did in the video about x squared minus 10x minus 11. We're going to take our two roots, our two values of x that make the function equal to 0, plug those in for x in the original function, and confirm that we do get 0. So first, completing the square. Since a is 1 here, we only have the one preliminary step of putting the c on the other side by adding 11 to each side. And now we're ready to complete the square. We take half of the coefficient on the x term and square it. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. We'll add 9 to both sides plus 9, plus 9. Now, since we just created a perfect square trinomial, we can certainly factor it. This factors as x minus 3 squared. And the right side is 20. A number squared is 20. So that number is plus or minus the square root of 20. And the number is x minus 3. x minus 3 is plus or minus the square root of 20. Adding 3 to each side, we'll have our two roots. Plus 3, plus 3. x is now isolated on the left, and we have 3 plus the square root of, plus or minus the square root of 20. But as, as you should um, get into the habit of doing, I'm going to simplify the square root of 20. The square root of 20 simplifies to 2 times the square root of 5. So our two roots are 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. I've taken the two roots, 3 plus the 2 times the square root of 5 and 3 minus 2 times the square root of 5, put them on our t-table to indicate that they are the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. Now we're going to solve the same quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. And so, plugging in the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a here is 1, b is negative 6, and c is negative 11. The opposite of b is 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared. And again, make sure that when you square negative 6, you get positive 36. Negative 6 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. a is 1, so the denominator is 2. Now inside the square root sign, 36, and then negative 4 times 1 times negative 11. That's 36 plus 44. So we get 6 plus or minus the square root of 80 all over 2. And uh, I've searched in the Algebra 1 textbook that I use with my 8th graders, and other than in the glossary, I have not found uh, any lesson on simplifying a root, which is really an oversight on the part of the publishers, because if you can't simplify a root, you cannot verify that the solutions you get from the quadratic formula are, in fact, the same as the completing the square solutions. Remember our two solutions from completing the square, which itself included a simplification of the square root of 20, are these two numbers here. Well, we can make these two results from the quadratic formula uh, look exactly like those by simplifying the square root of 80. 
the highest um, factor of 80, which is a perfect square, is 16. 16 times 5 is 80. So we can think of the square root of 80 as the square root of 16 times 5, breaking those apart, the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. The square root of 16 times the square root of 5 is exactly the same as the square root of 80. The square root of 16, of course, is 4. So our x here is 6 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5 over the 2a, which is 2. And, of course, dividing uh, each term of the numerator by 2, we get the exact same two results we got by completing the square. We get 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. Now we're ready to do what we did in that short video about x squared minus uh, 10x minus 11. That was a short video because it was very simple to confirm that the two roots there, when you plug them in for x in the original function, the function will be equal to zero. Well, if our two roots are correct here, that we got two different ways by completing the square and the quadratic formula, if we plug each one of them in for x and work out the value of the function, we should get zero. In other words, f of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 5 should turn out to be 0. Plug in 3 plus 2 times the square root of 5 for each of the x's. And let's see what we get. Well, we have to square a binomial here. 3 plus 2 times the square root of 5 squared. And I'm going to save a little bit of time by not showing exactly all of the steps in writing, but I'll, I'll talk our way through it. Um, it's the square of a binomial. So we'll do 3 times 3 to get 9. We'll do 3 times 2 square roots of 5. That's 6 square roots of 5. And then shifting to here, 2 square roots of 5 times 3 is another 6 times the square root of 5. So that's now 12 square roots of 5. And 2 times the square root of 5 times 2 times the square root of 5. 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5, so that term will be 20, 4 times 5. So what we have is 9 plus 12 times the square root of 5 plus 20. Now, at this point, you might get a little concerned about 12 times the square root of 5, but have faith, because over here, when we um, do negative 6 times 3, we're going to get negative 18. Whoops. I thought there was a problem here, but the only problem was copying. I didn't put the 2 right there. 3 plus 2 times the square root of 5. Earlier, I had not copied the number correctly. Negative 6 times 3 gives us negative 18. Negative 6 times 2 square roots of 5 is negative 12 square roots of 5. Now you see why we didn't have to worry about that. And then we also have the minus 11 in the function. So these two add to 0. 9 plus 20, 29. Negative 18 minus 11, also negative 29. So all of this becomes 0. F of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 5 is 0. And I'm going to do what math teachers and math textbooks often do. I'm sure it's a favorite with all the students. I'm going to leave for you on your own to verify that when you plug 3 minus 2 times the square root of 5 in for each of the x's in the function and work it out in a similar way that I did here, you will in fact get 0 when you do that as well. Well, that's all for now. Take care.